G'day guys, welcome back. I'm doing a acrylic pouring 101 today to show you how to mix up your paints if you're a beginner. Um, we'll show you how to get it done. So I always weigh everything and I'm in Australia so I'm using grams today. Uh, if you need to convert it there's 30 grams in one ounce. So Floetrol, just using Floetrol today. It, hopefully it's pretty easy for everyone to get. Give it a good shake before you start. I find I don't have to um, sieve my Floetrol. Uh, unless it's been in the garage over summer and it's got really, really hot and then once it got lumpy. So I just store it inside now, so no problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix three parts Floetrol to one part paint. And I've written it down here what I'm going to do. Hopefully you can see that. So in these cups I'm going to put just zero that. 90 grams of Floetrol and I weigh it because I want the same consistency for everything. So I've got 93 there. I'm not fussed about two or three grams. So I'm just choosing some shades of blue. If you're starting out don't put red and yellow and green and blue and purple and white. Just stick to one colour scheme. So light blue, sort of aqua, into the darker blues and into the navy and one white. So try for four colours and white. So if you're going reds, do reds and oranges and yellow and white or black. If you're going greens, light green, dark green, um, you know, don't mix up your colours too much. You know, just go muddy. So zero that again. Now I'm going to put in 30 grams of paint. So this is the global paint. It's a nice consistency. It's kind of like sour cream, I would say. So 30 grams of that going in. So that's one part flow troll to, sorry, three parts flow troll to one part paint. So I've got 32 there. Not fussed about that. Move it out of the way. Now this stirs in really well, the global paints with the flow troll. It doesn't take hours and hours to mix up your paint. Give it a stir, go around the outside like that. Wipe your stick. Give it another stir. And that's pretty much done. Where it hits the paint in the cup, it just leaves a little mound. Just a little mound and then disappears. You don't want it to sit on top for too long and you don't want it to go straight down to the bottom either. Just a little mound. So that's one done. Zero the scale again. Another 90. And our next colour is the turquoise. Zero that again. And go another 30. That's 35. I'll just take a little bit out. 33. That's okay. Give it another stir. Mixes so well. It's lovely and creamy, this global impasto paints. If you want to do this pouring, don't get the high flow global paint paints, just get the impasto. Another one down. Zero it back to 90. Some paints you'll find are thicker than others. This is a new one, it's called Scuba Diver. It's a blue colour, haven't used that yet, so we'll see what that one does. Do 30 of that one. Thirty one's okay. Give that a stir in. Wipe your sides. Wipe your stick. Another stir. So I'm going all sort of bluey greens today with these aqua colours and this is more of a bluey green than it is a bright blue. Now I know this one, my deep space, I know that one mixes up thicker than some of the others so I'm only going to put about 27 in because I know it's always a bit thicker than the other paints. Oops, I've got 30. Take a bit out. 
There we go. 27. So today I'm using, instead of the white, I'm using a metallic pearl. I like the way the metallics make their cells when they're added to the other paints in the mix. Um, I like that, so I'm adding just one metallic. And it's a creamy colour, it's a pearl instead of a white. But you don't have to do that, you can do white. If you are mixing metallics, you need to do them two parts flow troll to two parts paint. So I'm going to do, um, what am I going to do, 80-40 I'll do, which is two parts flow troll to one part paint. So that's 80, so now we'll do 40. It still looks really quite thick, probably looks thicker than the other paints, but when it's mixed up, it goes quite thin and you tend to lose it in your pores. So it needs to be thicker so that it'll stay visible. Otherwise it just all goes to the bottom and you don't even see your metallics. Oops, that's 47. Take a bit out. There we go. 41. That's fine. Okay, mixes up the same. Stir your side. It's a little bit more mixing than the other paints because it is thicker but as I said once it gets mixed up it's still relatively the same maybe a little bit thicker but I find I do have to have it thicker otherwise as I said it just disappears in the pore it doesn't show up at all okay so there's our lovely colors move them out of the way move the scale out of the way bring my little cookie cooler down so I tend to write on the back what I've done this is a um, thick card you can use UPO paper if you can't get it just go to your office supplies place and say what's the thickest paper you've got try to get um, at least 400 grams this is a 550 I think this one pop it there now what order am I going to do my paints I think I'll go light dark light dark light I'm going to do three flip cups for you today and for cells I'm going to use the silicon treadmill oil so there's 120 grams of paint in these I'm not going to put oil in that one so in here I'm going to put three drops of oil in each one two three one two three one, two, three, and one, two, three. And that's it. Um, oops, I've got silicone on my card. Try not to do that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't tend to stir it too much. Once it all goes into the cups, they mix anyway and they get stirred in. Now, three flip cups today. So this is a small cup. I'm flipping into a slightly bigger cup. Um, you can see the diameter of it, or the circumference of it is a little bit bigger, so three cups there. So, what I'm, I'm not going to layer today, I'm just going to pour in from a height. I find I get nice cells when the paint is poured in, because the paint's already starting to mix into the cup. And it's the mixing of the paint, the paint rubbing against other paint, that creates the cells. So I'm going to do that, let it mix in, it's already getting cells in the cup there, which is what we want. Lovely turquoise colour. So they've all got the same colour, these cups, but different amounts because I can't pour exactly the same amount into each. Finish off my pearl. Hopefully this will give us some nice cells. The metallics seem to give slightly bigger cells. And that mixed with the other paints is really pretty. 
Always have a cloth handy so that you can wipe your hands as you're going. I like to nice, a nice clean work surface. Finish off all these paints now. So two layers should be fine with your, with your paints. I'm missing. Tipped it onto the card. It's okay. It's going to get covered anyway. Now there's not as much paint now, so it's sort of sitting on top. If you've got a lot of paint, you can sort of do that and it falls in. So some paint will sit on top, some will go down the bottom. You have a nice ratio of both. little bit of turquoise going in. This end cup hasn't got as much as the other so I'll just finish off the turquoise in that one. Uh, so I think I've got about 600 grams of paint. Um, each cup had about 120 of paint. 10, 11, 12, yeah so Five cups, 200 grams. Right, let's get to flipping before I run out of memory on my camera. Pretty cells already. Now ideally you would leave that for a, a few minutes. Go away and make yourself a cuppa, come back, just so that the paint's got a chance to um, go down to the bottom and all blend in together. The heavier paints will sink to the bottom, the lighter pigmented pink paints will come up to the top uh, but if you don't have time for that that's fine just just flip them so I'm going to flip and drag down I'm just taking that leftover paint up the top and round we go a little bit more in the middle there and I'll just finish off what's left in these cups just on the corners here. The paint that's left over is a little bit more muddy so if you're going to use it try and use it on the edges that's going to sort of get tipped over anyway. Look at all those cells I don't even need to torch. Beautiful beautiful cells. Right let's get to tilting. Now hang on to your card if you're using a card. If you're using canvas you don't need to, obviously. But um, I'm going to just hang on to the card a little bit so it doesn't go flying off. Look how pretty that is. I'm just going to get this top bit covered first up here in that corner. If you've got a lot of paint, you can move it. See how you can move your paint? If you've got a lot of paint on there without your cells distorting, so make lots of paint, make what you need, add an extra cup. You can always pour it off if you need to, but see how it's all moving so well. And that's what you need when you're doing a, an acrylic pour. You've gone to the expense and the time of buying this paint, mixing it all up, putting it down on your canvas, and then you don't have enough paint and you're not happy with the result because everything's all stretched out of shape. So you're better off having an extra cup of paint and actually being happy with your pour because you've been able to tilt it around and not lose your cell shape. So I'm just going to go over to this corner because I want to try and get rid of some of that over there. That was that extra bit of the, the last little bit of the cup that I've put in there. I'll go carefully down there while I'm watching up here because you have to be careful not to distort too much up here while you're going that way. So just go slow and keep an eye on what's happening here. If you think this is changing too much and you're losing it, just stop. Okay, that'll do. Bring it back. You can see where the weight of the paint is moving beautifully. got too much paint on here. 
but as I said, I do like to have that 600 grams, five to 600 grams I find I need on this size. This is a 30 by 40 centimeter, uh, 12 by 16 inch. Whether it's a canvas or a card. If you've got a canvas, obviously you've got sides and you'll need a little bit more paint. Um, I use the same amount of paint and then I just run it off. So I probably didn't need to put that extra up the middle. See, it's not as, as attractive. I prefer just to pour down and, and use those leftovers for my sides that are going to tilt off anyway. Now I do need to tilt a little bit of paint off here because there's a bit much. I'm going to go off that side a bit there if I can. And bring the paint back to the center. Go that way a little bit. No, I'm not going to. I don't want to lose these. This is really pretty here, this dark bit. I don't want to lose it. So I'm just going to leave it right there. We have to learn when to stop. Now I'm going to torch just very lightly with my blow torch, butane blow torch, just to get rid of any bubbles that there may be. Try not to have flame coming out. <laughs> When you shake the tin, um, it sort of flames. So just go, go slowly, but keep it moving. Just to pop any bubbles. Okay, that's it. Now I'll take you in for a close up. Actually, I'll have to take the camera off so that I can bring it down this way and show you. Okay. Pretty, pretty. Lovely cells. Can't get that light out of it. The above lights are shining on it. So have a go at this. Relatively easy, I think. Post your results. I'd love to see them. Come and join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. There's been a few people posting their flip cup pours on there and they are doing a fabulous job. Really beautiful results. So pop yours up there, I'd love to see it. Look at these beautiful navy cells in here. These ones are really pretty too. Look at those ones. I love cells that have got white rings around them and then they've got other colours in the middle. Just gorgeous. So there you go. Acrylic Pouring 101. How to mix paints. How to do a flip cup pour. I will see you for the next video. Bye for now.